Hello. Now, cast your mind back to the turn of the century. Let's say 2000, for sake of argument. Around that time, camera manufacturers were falling over themselves to produce the first DSLR camera with interchangeable lenses. And in order to beat the competition, sometimes they converted a film camera so that you could use your film lenses, an approach which I felt was rather misguided because digital photography requires its own standard. Now Olympus did not go down that road. They designed a new DSLR camera from scratch and I'll show you now what they used as their starting point. I've got it on the table just over here. Here it is, a blank sheet of paper. Nothing on it. It's like saying photography is dead. Long live photography. For that reason, Olympus were a little later in the field, not until 2003, with their first DSLR camera with interchangeable lenses. I've still got that first camera. It was the E1. Here it is. Now, because they designed this camera from scratch, they were able more easily to overcome certain problems that affected digital cameras only. And one they solved in 2003 still bedevils other camera makes today. What is it? I'll show you. I'm sure you know what I'm going to say. And that is when you take the lens off the camera, then the sensor is exposed to dust. Not in this case. Because what Olympus did in their design was to place a filter in front of the sensor, effectively sealing it off from outside contamination. So that whenever you took the lens off or switched the camera on, a supersonic wave filter cleaned the dust off the filter, which is, does, does not have a static charge, and therefore my photographs were unblemished. And furthermore, and perhaps importantly, because Olympus were first in this field, what do they do? Rotten Stone says they slap a patent on it, don't they, to protect their very simple development. The E1 had 5 million pixels, whereas other makes had a few more. And for that reason, it got rather sniffy reviews in some of the photo magazines. The photo soothsayers were saying, oh no, 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 you possibly cannot get quality prints from just 5 million pixels, and certainly not publications. You want to bet? Let me show you something. At that time, or shortly just after, I got front cover reproduction of Britain magazine from, yes, a 5 million pixel camera. And what you may not realise is that the original shop here of Mermaid Street Rye was landscape. So you're only getting about three quarters of the image. Not only that, the publishers came back and asked for another one, this time of Leeds Castle. And yes, the same uh, things apply to this image as it did to the shot of Rai. But it didn't stop there. Do you remember this? The Olympus User Magazine. What a shame it's not published today. Yes, I've got... Have I got front cover? Not quite. Because if we now open the magazine up, it's front and back from a single image. And if you were to look closely at the photograph here of the West Door of York Minster, the quality is absolutely amazing. So yes, the E1 was not suitable for quality publication until, of course, you went and tried it. 
OK, there were early problems. Noise, for example, in low light being one, now resolved, which is more than can be said for some larger unprotected sensors. But as Olympus designed their first DSLR from scratch, other design improvements were possible and not usually found in a film camera. In collaboration with Panasonic, Micro Four Thirds was launched in 2009. At first, I found the name confusing. It suggested a smaller sensor, but Micro referred to the overall size and weight of these new cameras, now smaller due to the removal of the pentaprism that were a popular feature of SLR film cameras, but occupying a lot of empty space. The Digital Finder also got off to a shaky start. It looked fine as live view on a camera screen, but getting that technology to work in the viewfinder proved more difficult. No such problems today, and as the preview now comes from the camera's computer, changes to white balance and exposure can be checked first before taking the photograph, which couldn't be done with an optical finder. I could end with focus stacking, the technology to take several images simultaneously at different focus settings, then merging the sharp areas together to form a single image. It is primarily intended for macro photography, where depth of field hardly exists, and not really for landscapes. As a photographer who often has to shoot in low light without a tripod, the image stabilizer is one of the most important developments in camera design that does not pander to instant gratification. In the days of film photography, using a shutter speed longer than a hundredth of a second, especially with a telephoto lens, justified the use of a tripod. Not so today. Don't ask me how it works, but it does. And I am still no wiser after reading the explanation in the brochure, so don't ask. Shutter speeds in excess of half a second are not unusual. Even a second. I once achieved eight seconds, but only because I didn't know what I was doing. And at times there is something to be said for that. You find me in the tiny parish church at Chorden in Surrey, in the North Downs, almost hidden away from public gaze. Now, what this church is famous for, why people like to come and visit it, is the mural behind me. It was painted, I believe, in around about the 13th century by a travelling monk, I am told. It was whitewashed over at some stage, restored in the 19th century. Now, it's quite dark in here, but I'm going to now test the image stabilisation of this OMD EM10 Mark II camera. So it's not the most recent. The image stabilization is only in the camera, not the lens, which is quite an old one. One of the, I believe, original uh, OMD lenses, the 12 to 50. But I love to take it when I don't want uh, too much uh, uh, traveling gear. Now, the mural is called the stairway, or the ladder, I should say, the ladder to salvation from purgatory. So, wish me luck. You never know where I might end up before I see you again. So, keep your fingers crossed, won't you? Anyway, I'm going to take a picture. So, I hope it's going to be all right. I'll take a few more and I'll show them in a moment 
with the metadata detail, you know, shutter speed, things like that. I am actually on ISO 800. I did find the lower values, 2 and 400, a little risky. Anyway, I'll carry on. consider being one, but I found the queue too long. And I am not joking. Please don't be a clone of someone else, not even me. Be your own master. Develop your own style. You know, I present photographs, not numbers and graphs, that all too often tell you not what to do. I show you what can be done. Don't, for goodness sake, think that my way is perfect. It is seriously flawed. But you know how to get around those problems. You know, art itself, success in art, is often doing something incorrectly. And the problem with photography today, that it is bogged down by photo correctness. You know, when Olympus first marketed Let's have another look at it. The E1. They all said, oh no, no, Olympus won't survive. Well, as we've seen, this has developed into micro four thirds and many photographers today are buying these smaller and lighter cameras. The quality is just as good as anything else. And that is what I am showing you now. 